Now, these are some of my favourite... I was right about the hippo, of course. Ha, 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 ha. These are my favourite antelope of this area. They are, of course, the topi. And I was learning about the topi the other day I was. Let me just pull my hat down properly so you can hear me. And what I was learning about them is that they live in... The, they have the most variable social structure of any antelope out here. And it's quite difficult to understand because it varies from the sort of harem structure of the impala or wildebeest uh, all the way to completely sort of uh, without territory and just sort of random agglomerations of males and females all the way across to this thing called a lek system. Now... It's difficult to understand what this is, but basically males establish territories that attract herds of females with their offspring, depending on the size. I'm reading this, of course, and that's why it sounds like this. Depending on the size of the patches, territories can be as large as four square kilometers and sometimes border each other. Now, the fidelity of a female to a territory can last three years in the Serengeti, which is close enough as to where we are now. But the females in these territories function as part of the resident's male's harem, but then they can move off. And the females kind of chase off other females who want to come close to the lick. Now, I'm still unclear as to exactly what a lick is, but in Kenya and the Masai Mara here, uh, apparently these licks are established together, so territories cluster together. Oh, what well, it says here, topi males establish licks, which are territories that are clustered together. And the territories apparently have little value outside of the males in them. So the most dominant males occupy the center of the lek cluster, or the cluster of territories, and the less dominant males occupy the periphery. The males mark in the traditional fashion, with dung and uh, standing in an erect posture. And then the estrus females seek out the more dominant males towards the middle of the lek system. And I heard some guys referring to this uh, the other day and saying that the they seen they had seen some topi lecking now I can only assume that that means that they were fighting with each other or displaying quite uh, obviously uh, so I'm still learning all of this stuff and then it says that females quite unusually compete for dominant males which I think is quite interesting because it's not something that we see in many of the other antelope species uh, quite very like all the other antelope species of course the males will try and mate with as many females as possible but females will aggressively i'm reading again aggressively disrupt copulations that their favored males have with other females so there's quite a lot of jealousy in topi social structure but ladies don't like it when the men philander and of course well i can think of certainly at least one other species in which that happens can you fergus yes me too Very interesting. Anyway, I'm still learning about them, and I'd like to see the uh, licking that they're supposed to be doing. I'm still not entirely sure what that means. But their coloration is just so special. I've given no mention, of course, to the warthog that's behind them, uh, and if we pan off to the left, I've given no mention to the Thompson's gazelles that are very pleasantly sitting there and you can see their size now in relation to those warthogs, which are big. I think those are big warthogs. They're probably slightly larger than the average at Juma, but it gives you an idea of how tiny and delicate the Thompson's gazelles are. Ah, now, Amaya, you say, are there any springbok or springbucks here in the Mara? No, there aren't. This would be the sort of equivalent. It's about the same size of a sp as a springbok, looks about the same. I don't think that it can survive in the same kind of desert conditions, however, that the springbok can survive. And there's a lot more rain than the average sort of desert habitat in which you'd find a springbok. So you'd find them in southern Africa, in the Kalahari, and up into Namibia, in the really dry areas where there was probably less than 350 millilitres or millimetres of rain a year. So about 12 inches and below, you'll find springbok. But here, I think we have up to 900 millimetres of rain in some years, 
but probably an average of around seven or eight hundred. I think they're really rather special. And I mean, they will. Apparently, they do like quite dry areas, but not. You know, this is not a very dry area. Mixed feeders. They eat fresh grasses. They eat browse during the dry seasons. So much like impala, actually, these chaps will browse and graze depending on what it is that they. Uh, well, depending on the season. Tracy, you want to know if albinism has ever been seen in them? I, I imagine it probably has. I think lu leucism is probably slightly more common, and that certainly does happen. Now, we're having a bit of a topi interaction here. I think we might get some lecking, perhaps. Those look like bulls congregated on the left. That looks like a bull, and he was with some other bulls. Look like a bull, or does it look like a cow to you? I can't even tell the difference yet. No, that is almost certainly a cow. Let's just watch her. Now, Gubawala, that's a, that's a long time since I've heard from you. You say that, the, so thank you for getting back hold of us. You say there are so many species in one area. Well, that's the thing about this place. And I think it's, compared with Juma, it's probably slightly overemphasized by the fact that you can see so much further. So I think if you were to take all the trees out of the area between Drakensberg Road and Quarantine Clearings, I think you'll find that you'd see just about the same. But because there are so many trees there, you don't see the same. No, I don't know what these things are doing. Now, Mayor, you want to know how many males there can be in a herd of antelope? Now, Mayor, that's an impossible question to answer, and for once, not because I'm an imbecile. It is uh, impossible to answer simply because it varies so much. Um, and it varies from antelope to antelope, and it varies, of course, uh, from season to season. So in a, in a herd of impala, for example, there will be no males in the herd for some of the year, one male for other times, and many more males at other times. Uh, in the herd of topi here, I think it would be very much the same when they are lecking or setting up their territories. I think you'll find that the females, uh, or, you know, they'll be in, if, if you looked at a group, uh, the herd structure is probably quite loose, and so you'd find lots of males and females together. But if you looked at a wildebeest during breeding season, you'd find one wildebeest in a very small herd of females. But those herds are so fluid that it's impossible to say with any sort of degree of accuracy how many there would be. Now, I am going to continue from here. This